I'm Stacy, and this is Duchess Margaret. We met two years ago and changed each other's lives forever. I married Prince Edward, and Margaret dated my friend Kevin. They tried to make it work, but soon learned long distance is harder than it looks. Which brings me back to the old bakery to see how Kevin's doing. I've moved on. Really? Yeah. Ugh. Margaret needs us to be there for her. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. There's no way we'd miss your coronation. And uh, got you a little surprise. I hope it's okay that we're here. I know it in my heart. You and Kevin are meant to be. Ah, there's the sugar. I'll get it. I just hope you. I'll give you funny. <laughs> What in the world is going on here? Antonio, I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow morning. What's the deal with you and Antonio? I've known Antonio forever. I just want you to know I'm here for you. Whatever you need, whenever you need me. But the fact is, Kevin and I haven't even begun to talk about what went wrong between us. With the coronation coming up, I don't know if we ever will. I have a great idea. You want us to do what? We switch back. You said you needed more time with Kevin. Do you really think we could pull it off? Again? Does that mean you'll do it? Did you talk this over with Kevin? If Margaret's in, I'm in. <laughs> Finishing touches, rings. Feels weird taking it off. Even better than last time. I'll tell Edward everything as soon as it's over. Any for your thoughts? Ah, uh, yes. Stroll a day keeps the bad weather away. Oh, yo. Yeah. What could possibly come between two people who look at each other like that? Presenting Lady Fiona Pembroke. Maggie Moo. Oh, double chin, that's a delete. Here we go. This is my cousin, Fiona. Oh, dear Lord, there are three of them. Why can't I pull the switch? Be Ooh. queen. Off with their heads. <laughs> Welcome to They Call This a Movie, testing the strength of friendships one terrible movie at a time. Subscribe to the podcast and iTunes on the podcast services by searching They Call This a Movie and find us on Twitter and Instagram at TicTampod. That's T C T A M Pod. Welcome back to They Call This a Movie. This is Anthony Del Vecchio. With me, as always, is Dan Aquino and Mark Myers. Say hello, gentlemen. Hey, friends. Hello. Now that it is the holiday season, question for you guys. Not so much a bit, but a question. Your trees, do you put them on yourself or is it an automatic timer for the lights? Automatic timer. Automatic timer. Okay. I'm one of those manual suckers. Okay. Mm. Then this question is more for Anthony. Okay. Does the lights coming on scare the crap out of your cats all the time? Or is it just my cat? <laughs> I don't. I'm usually not there to witness it. Okay. So I can't tell you yes or no. You see, the problem with that is now the wet bandits know when to rob your house because there's an automatic timer. Well, that's true. And they're probably listening to this podcast. Yeah. So, so now they know. Yeah. Daniel Stern's a big fan. I, yeah. I keep them guessing. So who's the real winner here? <laughs> I suppose you're right. Dan always thinking up his schemes. Yep. He's he's playing 3D chess. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's tough being me. I got to tell you, always thinking ahead. <laughs> got to outsmart those wet bandits. <laughs> OK, so, yes, we're just fully into Christmas month so far. This is our third episode already in December. This month is going by fast, and there's not many more shopping days till Christmas. But before we get into that, yeah, if you are listening to the podcast right now, the moment it comes out, you still have a chance to vote in our Twitter poll for next week's episode. And we have decided to go with TV Christmas specials. So three of us picked. Uh, did we all pick? No, we did not pick all cartoons. Mark, I did not live action. But all children's programming, Dan picked the Sonic Christmas episode. I picked the He-Man Shira Christmas special. And Mark, you picked the Power Rangers Christmas special. The original one, because they have like seven of them. Right. There's all different Power Rangers uh, yes. series, too. So currently in the lead is the He-Man Shira. So if you are not a fan of that and you want something else to win, go on and vote. If you are a fan of it, then go on and vote as well. That's at TicTampod on Twitter. If you truly were inspired and appreciate it, 
JDF, you will go on and vote for the Power Rangers movie. Don't, don't try and <laughs> appeal to the nostalgia sentimental crowd like us. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's a new low. That's a new low, Mark. <laughs> anything, Jason, a, anything it takes. I learned you, from Summer Catch. You gotta. Good. Jason Lord. David Frank is rolling in his <laughs> dragon sword right now. <laughs> oh, I'll be completely honest. I don't even know if he's in that special. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> now you're lying to our our listeners. Potentially, <laughs> it's good not going to win. God damn! I, I, I've heard the the He Man She Ra special is pretty fun there you go well i hope I, it wins i almost voted for it i was like well that that's not how it works right i did almost pick a christmas comes to pack land so the pac-man uh, christmas special. i looked at the same oh, one but man. i couldn't find it anywhere i, I think can't imagine that being YouTube. fun <laughs> it was supposed to be on boomerang but apparently it's not it's probably on youtube i'm sure yeah i i don't understand why people find pac-man entertaining at all well it's because they had a fever they had a Pac-Man Pac-Man fever. fever. <laughs> uh, was it worse than COVID? I mean, it was about the same. About the same? Same numbers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but this week, getting into this week's movie, this week was my pick. And we stuck with the theme this month. We didn't really plan on it. At least I didn't plan on it. We our, All three movies that we picked were Netflix movies. And I went with Princess Switch, colon, Switched again. That is the second film in the Princess Switch series because uh, it's great. You know, what do we love on this podcast? We love podcast the movies in which uh, an actor plays multiple roles. Here we've got three Vanessa Hudgens for your money. You can't go wrong with that. I was going to pick, I originally picked the first one, but this one adds the third Vanessa Hudgens, Fiona, and I stand Fiona. Yes, we have a new Stan on this podcast. Yes, this is a Fiona Pembroke Stan account. And yeah, I've seen this before. It's a lot of fun. It's stupid as fuck. But I, I'd be lying if I don't I didn't say that Vanessa Hudgens kills it in this movie, as far as I'm concerned. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts. So, Dan, where are you coming from with Princess Switch switched again? Oh, boy. It's been a while since a movie's made me fiery mad. <laughs> oh no yeah you, you got you guys aren't gonna like my take on this i think because it sounds like you both really enjoyed this i hated this movie <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad Tell yeah, us, I, why do you hate it i checked out when they switched because i stopped caring about any of these people because they're all rotten people except for the the one husband the husband who just wants to spend time with <laughs> vanessa hudgens prime is that I, I don't know which one is the, the the real Vanessa Hudgens. So that's Stacy, Chicago Stacy. Chicago Stacy. So he Edward. just wants to spend time with Stacy. Meanwhile, specifically, specifically. So Edward. It, so that's kind of the main couple in the first movie. Okay. Stacy comes from from Chicago to participate in a baking contest in this fake country that we're going to call Genovia which I know is the Princess Diaries country, but I can't remember off the top of my head where it is in this, in the first one. Montanero. Montanero. That is, and yes. Margaret's country, and then it begins with a B, is the Princess oh, country. Oh, and I, the, we didn't see the, I have never seen the first one. Yeah, so the Prince's country is like Belgravia. Belgravia, Belgravia. that's right. Belgravia. Belgravia. Yeah. And she is the, the princess of Montanaro. So, so Edward is the main guy, the lead actor in the first movie. Here, he is reduced to his entire arc is the fact that he hasn't fucked in three months. <laughs> but we can't say that because it's a TVG. Every right. se- every scene is him getting cock blocked by somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Which I kind of, which I kind of see, like it's because it's like a secret through line throughout the entire movie. I kind of love it because there's <laughs> one scene where like they're kissing at at one of the party, like the first party they go to, and like they're kissing, and then the little girl Olivia comes up, and the eye roll is is so apparent and so obvious that I just find it fucking hilarious. Oh, that don't get me started on the daughter. Holy shit. Someone should have told her to rein it in a little bit because she is just full blown chewing the scenery in every scene that she's in. 
she's such an over actor. I, I wanted to I, I wanted to choke her. I, I did not enjoy the, the daughter. But yeah, she, e- everyone in this movie is outside of Edward is just an awful person, I think. You, you have <laughs> Stacy who is it just decides to throw someone's life through turmoil, two people's life through turmoil, right? She wants to get the guy, what's his name, Kevin? Kevin. Yeah. They go, you have to come to another country so you can fall in love again. Meanwhile, he has a business to run. Well, you know, that doesn't matter. It's, just, it's just Stacy's throw. business. It he runs Stacey's it, though. Yeah. Yes. Right, That he runs the bakery. So, yes, they. it was her It was her bakery in the first one, and I guess they. she's left it to him now that she is now the queen of Belgravia. Belgravia? Uh, Belgravia? What is it? Belgravia? Something like that. It's like Bel- Belgravia or something like Belgravia. that. Yeah. Yeah, and the the switch was totally unnecessary in this movie, I thought. You have the cousin who's just a bad person in general, you know, pickpocketing people. She's great. You have Antonio, <laughs> who is mean for no reason whatsoever. His his involvement with the scheme makes zero sense in this movie. Well, because he, he, he explains in one sentence that he didn't get left the family fortune, so he has expensive taste on a low income. So it, it makes, but it much. still makes no sense. That makes no sense. If you if you tell the the princess or the queen, hey, this woman is impersonating you, you're going to be a fucking hero. You just caught someone who is committing treason against the crown. You're yeah, going to tell me there's no reward for that. But would the hero would that hero worship get him more money, or does he still have a advisor income? He's going to get more money because now he's <laughs> trustworthy. And he's going to be exalted to a higher, uh, I'm assuming, a higher status. I, so, I somebody, think, you're going to tell me he's not making bank as the advisor to the fucking queen? I think he's like, I want money that's going to set me up for life. He tells her to wire him an indeterminate amount of money into a fake charity to basically fuck off for the rest of his life, basically. it To me, it's... It's a lose-lose scenario. There's no possible way you could get away with it because eventually the cousin is going to get caught. The cousin's going to rat you out. So you, what, what's going to happen here? I think well, he's. I think he's betting. He's. You, sometimes you got to swing for the fences, man. That's not the way to swing for the fence. <laughs> He'll go to a country without extradition. Yeah, just like her. I think he yeah. sees the writing on the walls that his his original plan was he's going to marry her, right? And he's right. going to be co- come into that. And he sees the writing on the world, walls that she's not really into him the way she's into Kevin. So he makes a play, a power play there where he's like, "All right, well, you know, Kevin might not might even like give me the boot after if they get married because I've made it clear that he should go home to Chicago because she shouldn't marry some." Poor Baker. Kevin was so, already on the way out. He was on his way had, to the airport. When he's had had a lot of subtext to it, but we'll just leave it there. But he doesn't know that. No, no, I, I was making more no, of a no, reference. I'm, yeah. I'm talking about Dan's point. It, it, oh, Dan's point, sorry. It's such a piss poor plan it, on every level. There's no way that they weren't going to get caught. Well, of course, it's it's a it's the point. It's a Netflix romance movie. Yeah, I mean, in real life, they would get caught as they're, well. Yeah, they're not Hans Gruber. Right. That's that's your critique <laughs> of this movie? Well, Is that an exceptional thief? Even Come Hans on, Gruber damn. got caught. Even Hans Gruber got caught. Right. So, so nobody just, should ever make an attempt. No. Because no, no one should ever in movies. No, you you're can, not Hans Gruber, so you're going to get caught. You can make the attempt, but you can't just half-ass it that way. Hans Gruber planned it for quite a while, right? And he his it would have worked had there not been... John McClane there. There is 0% chance that this half-ass concocted scheme of theirs is going to work. And the cousin should have known this right away when they realized they kidnapped the wrong person. So automatically, it's done. Well, they've already... So at that point, she says, well, I'm in for... You know, I'm in for a nickel. I might as well be in for a dime. In for a penny, in for a pound kind of thing. Yeah, so she's already done. They've already done the kidnapping, right? They've gone that far, mm-hmm. and so they move. They try to move up the coronation so that they she can get queened, transfer the money, and then be out before the next morning, basically. 
it would she would still get caught for impersonating royalty. That but, that shit is like punishable by death. You're you're saying that it's a foregone conclusion, but that's in the in the scheme of this movie, it's not. You have to kind of give this uh, give any movie. So it, it's basically you're you're uh, suspending disbelief. Suspending disbelief enough to be like, okay, the conceit of this movie is that she's going to kidnap the princess or whatever she is. Yeah, sure. Is there is there uh, are the odds in her favor? No, but. Like, literally every movie could be like, well, that's probably not going to happen, so that's stupid. Sure. <laughs> you know? I, I think my my big problem with it is there was no reason for Antonio to get involved. Even, all right, so he has expensive taste, sure. He basically lives at the mansion, because we always see him at the, the royal mansion. So he's taken care of there. He's got to make good money as an advisor to the queen. Obviously not enough. What if he's got gambling debts? What if that's what he means by expensive tastes? Or what I, if he's like just super into hookers and coke? I wish they would have brought that up. I, we so this know, is the stuff we, I would have liked to have heard. We don't know Antonio's story. Why is it that he needs he needs to hitch his wagon to Fiona Star in this in this kidnapping attempt? We don't know. Sure. I, I would like to know that. That would make more sense other than my brother took he, he was given most of the estate. To me, all right, you're still super duper rich. It sounds is like he, apparently not. Apparently yeah. not as much. Not as much as he's spending. I don't know. I, it just it still seems as if it's a very wishy washy reason to just join in on this scheme because he well, it, he had everything lined up anyway. But again, though, he is getting basically pushed out by Kevin just as quickly as he's trying to move in. I don't think he. he I don't think his standing is as strong as you think it is. At that point, it was. Because he doesn't know that w w Margaret, right? Margaret is the queen. He doesn't know that Margaret and Kevin went out on a secret date. As far as he knows, they had that conversation in the the bedroom or the one of the rooms where they were at the understanding that he like it would be best for them to get together. He doesn't know about the secret but rendezvous. You are forgetting the scene at the party where Kevin literally steals her away from him. He <laughs> that like was beforehand. No, that's after. Is it? I I thought it was cuz they they have the party then cuz they, right they for they set up the entire house in decorations somehow in a in an afternoon. Yes, oh, it's good when you have staff. There was there was six people there. They 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 decorate the party, right? Then they Kevin and and Margaret have the little flower fight. Then Antonio makes his appearance in the movie, right? Right, right. Then they have a con. Uh, then Fia uh, Stacy and Margaret have a conversation about Antonio. Mm -hmm. Then Antonio calls. Then they're going to go out to see. they eventually they wind up going to go want to go to the Santa's village or whatever, right? Santa's village. And yeah, he I, called... I think I think he just said a drive. The first oh, he, wants drive. To go for a, yeah. he wants to go for a drive. Right. Then Antonio pulls her away and basically proposes marriage to her. Right? Was it, it was that early? I thought he talks to Antonio first. No, no, no. He doesn't propose. He gives her the necklace and says that they he wants to be something more than friends. I, 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 like I said, mo uh, more or less he proposes. More or less he proposes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he makes his intentions clear. And Ant Antonio specifically. Yeah. Then he has that talk to Kevin about why don't you just go home to Chicago? She she's too good for a Chicago bake a poor Chicago baker. And then at that party or coronation party, there's a lot of parties in this. I don't exactly yeah. understand what they all are for. Yeah. But it is connected to the coronation. And she says she apologizes to Kevin when after he steals her away from Antonio. She apologizes to Kevin for canceling their trip to the Christmas village. Okay. So that is more or less the timeline, the sequence of events. So at that point, Antonio realizes that Kevin, Kevin's not going to roll over that easily. And obviously, Margaret, it's obvious to him that Margaret has a suitor in mind. Okay. And that's Kevin. So then Margaret also lets her cousin get away with impersonating her, which again is... That's got to be punishable by something very severe, I'd imagine. I mean, she, she goes. Like, to, she does go to prison. No, it's they. They show her with just security there. Yeah, she she uh, says that 
uh, maybe I'll talk. I'll talk to the court about getting you a, a leaner sentence. It sounds yeah. like to me she's kind of a weak-willed monarch. I mean, Fiona would be a stronger-fisted royalty. Yes, I'd r- I'd rather have her because she's more in line with what royalty is. Look, I've already said that this podcast is a Fiona Stan podcast, so I'm with you 100. percent You don't have to tell me. I like how she has her bumbling uh, cronies. Mm. very very cruella de vil of her uh Uh, so she's probably the best part of this movie but oh 100 i do not disagree and that's the she's the she's the reason why we're doing this movie and not the first one i i just i i don't understand why there was a need for a switch it's flimsy yeah it's flimsy like because she's so busy being the queen or almost being the queen that she doesn't have enough time to spend with kevin she just wanted to get out of that choir cell choir yeah that's the other thing she's so busy all she had to do was to tell kevin i have to do this choir thing and then i'm free because nothing happens after that everything's fine after that just just go to the concert kevin come with me to the concert it'll be great and no no it's uh we, we have to pull off this dollar store parent trap movie it made no sense to me. I did not like most of the characters. This was almost Spider-Man level three stuff. There's too many villains in it. You could have just had the cousin be the villain. Why Like, why do you need to have the love triangle in it? Or just have Antonio be the villain. Why do you need to have the cousin in it? Bite your tongue. Yeah, I'm just every, saying. Every reason to have Fiona in this. I would, yeah, I would rather have it where it's just the cousin who's the villain. That makes more sense to me instead of having Antonio be there as well. I don't think that's needed because well, it, you, it kind of negates the switch to me. You needed another generic white guy to confuse with Edward because they look just they I, look so much alike. There is a scene where the daughter walks in to I, I think it was the day of the switch. The daughter walks in to the dining room and Edward is having breakfast. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and, and Jen goes, oh, that, that's the prince. That's the prince? I was like, he looks like a bad guy. I, it was so hard for me to wrap my head around a lot of these characters. I couldn't really tell who was who sometimes. So I, I just kind of zoned out after a while. Mm-hmm. And I, I just had this one question, and I'll, I'll, I'll seed my time here. Does Vanessa Hudgens, the real Vanessa Hudgens, does she exist in this world, you think? So here's here is a complicated <laughs> part of the Princess Switch universe. Okay. Not specifically to Ves- Vanessa Hudgens, but Netflix exists in this world. We learned that from the first movie. Okay. And the movie, the Netflix movie, A Christmas Prince, also exists based on the first movie. However... The two main characters from A Christmas Prince make a cameo as their characters at the end of this film in the coronation scene. So (laughs) those characters exist in this universe as real people, as well as characters in a movie that Vanessa Hudgens character Stacy watches with or i guess margaret as stacy watches with kevin in the first movie so theoretically there's five vanessa hudgens in this universe four 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 that's got to be some kind of wacky space-time continuum thing right yeah but technically there's only one vanessa hudgens right right four people who look like her yeah now if you're pitching to me a fourth movie in which they bring in a fourth vanessa vanessa hudgens who in fact is the real vanessa hudgens (laughs) i you know what i will give my money i'll be like a small producer on that i'll give it all the money i have I was waiting for like a, a Vanessa Hudson, Vanessa Hudgens. It, we've said Christmas. it too many times. It means, yeah. it means nothing now. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how to pronounce it anymore. I was waiting for a Vanessa Hudgens Christmas song to come on, like like her rendition of Winter Wonderland to come on and really just fuck with everything. Be like, oh, well, here's Vanessa Hudgens pretending to be the queen who is a princess while also singing Winter Wonderland. <laughs> it it would have just been this... It, in, crazy inception style vanessa hudgens world 
And I, I think we missed the the main plot that should go into the Princess Switch 4, which I'm going to deem the final switch, where all these characters just switch into Vanessa Hudgens. Ooh. And that's how she's able to do all this music and acting and you know, like charity mul- work, is that there's like actually... Multiplicity. Work. It's like multiplicity. I I, I, at one point, I think the cousin mentions Ariana Grande. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I, I kind of marked out a little bit because I always confuse Ariana Grande and Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> okay. I don't Not know Selena why. Selena Gomez and Vanessa Hudgens? Oh, I forgot about Selena Gomez. Yeah, you could throw They're all Disney kids, right? Yeah. Yeah, so or, throw them all yeah. in there. High school, yeah. But yeah, I was, um, I don't know. They, they cause a priest to almost miss his flight. Like, <laughs> oh, we got to get married because they're royal. It kind of sounds like you had a bad day, watched this movie, and you carried it over, too. <laughs> I had a great day. My, my day was fine. I, I, I got home. I, I made some uh, some tomato soup. I had a, a grilled cheese with it. Uh, what, what, I, I, I did squats today, so I felt good there. Ah, oh, it's leg day. That's leg day. I, I put it on, and I, I was into it at first because it, it seemed like a very simple, okay, we want to hook up Kevin with his ex flame who happens to be the queen awesome and then like oh we just need to switch now because you're busy okay it's very flimsy and v- vanessa hudgens to me she does an okay job here for the most part i just i i was kind of bored okay mark what about you hey, hey. Hey. switch switch again Ooh, okay i hate it no um no, I actually enjoyed this movie because I am kind of a sucker for, for, for movies like this. But the thing I wanted the most out of this, and I will never speak ill of our queen, Fiona, but I really wanted Fiona to have like a different accent so that Vanessa Hudgens had to do three different accents in this movie. Like she probably has like a, a like different dialect of English accent, but like make her some kind of dramatic, you know, cousin or something and just mm-hmm. speak in some kind of German accent. That was the only thing I was hoping for. But I guess the ending doesn't work if they have different accents, I guess. Right. But I like the way they set everything up and you can kind of predict sort of what, you know, the steps on it. But they didn't, at least in my opinion, didn't do it in too much of an eye rolling way. The only time I was a little bit frustrated in this movie, which, you know, whether or not you love these movies, you do get frustrated at points, was how much of an idiot the prince was. In the fact that this little nine, ten year old girl is just like, oh no, don't worry about your wife, come with me. And yeah. he's like, okay, I guess this. He's kind of a dummy. Yeah, he pretty much played a dummy in this movie. He's all backed up. That's why he's not thinking yeah, he clearly. Is. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Although Seinfeld would say that the opposite. No, <laughs> it's true. I found that to be well. I'm not a fair. I'm <laughs> dumb no matter what. So because <laughs> I'm always fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you said it, not me, Ann. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm so, never not fucking. <laughs> yeah, that was the that was the only part that frustrated me was he was a little bit of a moron. Like I thought, the fun part for me would be if he was like n- was like knew what was going on, but just kind of let the little girl do her thing because he kind of like goes, okay, I I I can believe they're coming from a good place. Right. That's actually the one one thing that Dan, out of all his critiques of this movie, didn't mention. There's no reason he shouldn't know. The, what their plan is yeah no he should be like there's no reason why he doesn't know the they only reason know. is is i didn't see the first movie so you can correct me if you remember but i don't know if he makes like a promise in that movie that they'll never switch again and maybe that's what it's hinging on that can be the only thing but yeah you're 100 right he should be in on it but that also doesn't allow certain fun moments like when he tells stacy his issues with yeah. stacy thinking it's Margaret. I almost feel like he doesn't know specifically for that scene, but you could have her confess that in that moment, right? Yeah. You could have yeah. that. You could have that moment and have this character be in on it. Yeah. And it's just have right a, good. yeah, just have a heart to heart after he confesses it all out. And then that's when they let him in on it. Yeah. He could have helped, um, right? He, yeah. he could have taken Antonio somewhere like, Oh, you know, I, I need to talk to you about something. And that could have given Margaret. Yeah, he wouldn't need the switch. Yeah, that that's what my I think that's what my whole real issue is. The, the switch is completely pointless. Yeah, it's called yeah. the princess switch. It needs to happen, Dan. 
I for the sake of the movie, yes. <laughs> I they agree. need to switch again. I, oh, they, the the fact that they even brought like we have to switch again, like oh fuck you. <laughs> I I'll fully admit I did the uh, the Leo DiCaprio thing, pointing at the screen. It's like they're gonna switch. <laughs> this is when they do it. This, this is, is when, when they, they do, do it. it. Switch or like nudging of you know if somebody was watching it with nudging, like, guys, guys, this is when they're gonna switch. Watch, they're yeah. gonna do it. I don't know if where my feelings would fall one way or the other if I had seen the first one. My questions about the little girl would have happened later than when I looked on IMDb and realized there were two different actresses. I think the look of the movie was was pretty well done in terms of um, I don't know where this is in the world that it constantly snows on cue mm-hmm. <laughs> when people need it to snow. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, uh, we went through most of the conversation with Dan's critique of it. It's just, it's a good Christmas movie. It's not too eye rolling for a TVG uh, movie, which, you know, very easily could have been. They deal with some actual, on very like light beer esque, like adult shit in this movie. But yeah, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's very safe. And I know I was spoiled by Ant about the third one, but I really wish that. As someone said on Letterboxd, keep doing this forever and just add a different Vanessa Hudgens to each movie. But I guess you can't do that because you're starting to run out of excuses for why people look like her. But yeah, yeah, it's a good movie. And I'm glad we did the second one because trying to pick up on things um, throughout the movie was more fun than just maybe already seeing the, you know, seeing the pattern that they probably followed the same exact thing as the first movie. Mm -hmm. And you got to see someone get chloroformed in this movie. That's just great. Oh, yeah. That's I funny. laughed out loud. <laughs> so you liked when she got <laughs> drunk? It's hilarious. It happens too this, quickly. This is a movie that shouldn't have someone get drugged and kidnapped, but it does. It happens. It's fucking, it's fucking great. Again, Vanessa should be hanged for treason. She, she, in her mind, she was chlorof- She was drugging the future queen of their country, and she gets <laughs> off with a slap on the wrist. You are not a good leader, Margaret. Yeah, I think the first, her first act as queen is not to hang her cousin. But it, I don't know. It's tough. But people, like, if she told the story, yeah, she, she tried to drug me and then take my mantle. I think people would understand. She accidentally committed treason. It's fine. <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> Who doesn't commit a little treason in their 20s? Right. I mean, that's the time to do it, really. <laughs> so, The Princess Switch, colon, switched again from 2020, is directed by Mike Roll, who's directed all three Princess Switch movies. Also, Love at First Bark, Date My Dad, and A Christmas Miracle for Daisy. Stars Vanessa Hudgens in three roles. Sam Palladio, Nick Sager, Mark Fleischman, Mia Lloyd, Sue Ann Braun, Lachlan Niebuhr, Ricky Norwood, and Florence Hall. Has an IMDb score of 5.4 and a Rotten Tomato score of 56%. Budget, $10 million. And no box office, obviously, because this was released on Netflix on November 19th, 2020. You guys want to get into the plot? Let's do it. Sure. And what do you got for us this week? As always, we're going to say a big shout out to our friends at Geek Vibes Nation, Tia and Brittany. Uh, You've heard me talk about them countless times before, but they're so good at what they do and we love them so much. Just want to let you know about their podcast, The Top Ten with Tia. Go over to geekvibesnation.com, search The Top Ten with Tia, and it'll pop right up. Okay, great. And we are going to be right back and you guys are going to listen to some messages from friends of the podcast and we will be back in a second. Hey everyone, this is Steve. And this is Adam. And we're part of the Hop Nation USA podcast. Pittsburgh's number three craft beer podcast. Join us every Friday for new beer reviews. We'll talk about the news, history, and homebrew. Plus, we'll sit down with the best brewers and industry personalities that'll have us. So whether you're a casual drinker, a hazy boy hophead, or even if you're a whale hunting cellar hoarder, just search Hop Nation USA on Apple, Spotify, or your favorite podcatcher and join the nation.
Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. It's me, George, from the best little horror house in Philly, the show where we talk about the best horror movie ever made, according to our guest at least. We've talked about groundbreaking classics like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Alien, but we've also got a lot of great ones coming up, including some very fun guests like Len Kabazinski of Swamp Zombies and Red Letter Media fame, Caroline Williams, the star of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and Chase Williamson from John Dies at the End. So make sure you're subscribe to the best little horror house in philly and i'll see you boils and ghouls over there and welcome back now it's time to get into the plot for the princess switch colon switched again we open on an animated title screen as our main character stacy recaps the first movie and also some events that have happened since which i very much appreciate it there you go you didn't need to watch the first one it's like the first 40 minutes of silent night deadly night i thought the same thing yeah recaps the whole movie and then we then cut to the season's baking challenge of Belgravia. Stacy gets introduced to the crowd to announce the winner. And there's obviously a budget cut to this challenge because it was indoors the first time in the first movie. It, real quick. Did anyone notice there was a little girl in the audience who looked just like Greta Thunberg? <laughs> no, I did not. See, there's a girl in the in the front of the crowd who's wearing like a pink, uh, like a parka almost. Mm hmm. I was like, "Is that? Did they get Greta Thunberg for this movie?" Uh, yeah, I did not notice. That'd have been something. Yeah, that, that's an odd. That would have been an odd cameo. <laughs> yeah. It's like, look at all this climate change. Look at all the snow around you, Greta. Yeah, what do you yeah. think about that now? <laughs> well, she had, she took uh, time away from her campaigning and all that, speaking at the uh, the climate summits. Mm-hmm. I mean, she went to see if they switched again, Dan. That's yeah. true. She's just really into Belgravian baking challenges. Right. Uh, climate change and baking challenges. <laughs> Gotta have a hobby. Yeah. We then cut to Stacy and Edward in their bedroom, and Edward basically alludes to the fact that they they've been way too busy to fuck. But Stacy says that they're about to take a vacation to Montanaro to go see uh, Margaret, which transitions to a conversation about whether Margaret is ready to be queen of Montanaro. And we learn that Margaret and Kevin broke up sometime between the first and second movie. And Stacy believes that Margaret is still not over Kevin. So Stacy takes a detour to Chicago to visit Kevin and Olivia on the way to Montanaro. Kevin is basically running the bakery by himself and wearing sweatpants all the time and also collecting cats. I I love, it, before they really get into it, I love that these two kingdoms are just like vaguely Europe. Mm-hmm. Like all, all these flights they're taking to get to the places. Yeah. It's, it's just feel- like somewhere Europe. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these movies do that, especially like these these movies that have a prince or a princess, like like the uh, the Princess Diaries. Yeah, yeah, that that's just very vague. Yeah, Th- this could be could be any European country. Mm-hmm. I guess because they don't want to get permission from the royal family. Yeah, I I wanted to see a little bit more of the uh, the inner workings of these countries. I wanted really? to see. I did. Yeah. Mm. Why? Why? What well, makes that a better movie? <laughs> Because, because why do they, what are they in charge of? Like, what do the people are, like them? Are do you we... are you a huge Phantom Menace fan, Dan? <laughs> yeah, you, you love the the prequels. There's plenty of politics in those movies. Well, well, that's totally different because we're those are space uh, space magicians. All right, that's everyone wants to see that. Here, I just want to do the people. You even how do the people feel about her? Do they like Margaret? Do, do they not like her? What what's their economy based off of? So like, you what think are their, this what movie are their imports is, exports? What you think this movie is missing is political minutia. Yeah, I need to know why she's uh, she's. They think she's capable. <laughs> what's her approval rating? Yeah, what's her approval rating? <laughs> do, does she? You know, maybe have her go out into the public and kind of like, oh, here's some food or here's some blankets, kind of thing. You know, like. Is she is she for the people? Doesn't look like it. She's too busy uh, decorating her fucking mansion for a for a, a ball. So I, I think that she you can't criticize her for decorating for the ball when previous to that moment she literally didn't because she felt like it isn't the right time because this country is still mourning their king. That's she not switched. fair. To, that's not fair to her. She switched pretty quickly. That don't she... don't don't put that on her. That's Stacy. That's Stacy. That's the queen of Bulgravia is doing right. Yeah, Take it she, up yeah. with her. She sucks like, too. Like every 
like every great um, vaguely British sounding country. They just need an American to butt their way in to make a decision. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what I don't like about her, the, about <laughs> Stacy. She just decides, oh, I'm just going to like kind of do whatever I want here. That's the fucking American way, man. <laughs> we butt our way into everything. Foreign I, policy. Yeah. These colors <laughs> don't run. <laughs> I, America. I, it, it just annoyed me so much that, again, it took me two days to decorate my living room. It took them an afternoon to decorate an entire palace. When you have the powers of a montage, you can do anything. I, you know what? I didn't have the power of the montage. <laughs> That's what it was. I didn't have the what, what song played under uh, underneath the tree by Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, that would have helped. That's what I missed. Yeah, just Kelly Clarkson just shrieking like a banshee over that. Why song. did they choose that song? Why is that song so like manic? I, it is very. Uh, it, it's very uh, all over the place. <laughs> it's like a three, It's like at three hundred beats a second. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's more. It's not a. Uh, it's an upbeat song, but it's more of a threatening Christmas song. Yeah, it is a scary song. The way she sings it is scary. <laughs> Just too much. Too She's much. She's yelling it at you. You had dial it back back there, <laughs> Kelly. I, of all the songs you could pick, it doesn't even fit the montage. <laughs> right underneath Although, the tree. What yeah. tree? Although again, this is a moment where ne- this is showing the difference between a Netflix Christmas movie and a Hallmark movie. They sprung for that song. You think it costs less? No, I'm saying Hallmark movies don't buy these songs. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hallmark, they'll take, uh, they'll either have, make us, they'll write an original song that sounds vaguely like a Christmas song that you know, or they'll just take a, a um, stock song, a royalty free uh, public yeah, we, domain. We, for the, the last movie we watched, the um, Falling for Christmas, I think it was just like random jingle bell sounds and, you know, normal music swelling kind of thing nothing they had they had an actual song though when they're in the we're in there in the car he switches to a song oh like a non-christmas song jingle bell rock right well, she was came on but that's what she was singing but then he switches to a song that like is is like a pop song like a non-christmas pop song you're right i, I forgot about that yeah i forget what song it is now off the top of my head i think it was like an 80s song it, it wasn't Tears for Fears, was it? Let me think. I'm looking for it now because now we're talking about it. I wish I remembered this, but I yeah, I get it. But he, he, Anthony's right. They they did have just a. It was a 80s pop song. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't Head Over Heels. No, All Out of Love by Air Supply. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Stacy then brings an invitation to Margaret's coronation, telling Kevin that he should at least go to it as Margaret's friends. And while he tries to make an excuse about ever already RSVPing that he wasn't coming, it turns out Olivia snagged the RSVP before it hit the mailbox so they can still go. So Kevin relents as Stacy tells him he needs a new pair of pants and a haircut. And then they're off to Montanaro, and Margaret is excited to see Olivia and a little more reserved, happy to see Kevin. So they go all go into the palace, and it turns out that Margaret hasn't done anything to make the palace her own. There's still coverings on all the furniture, as she says the country is still mourning the king, and it wouldn't be right. But Edward makes the point that they're also celebrating a new queen. So Stacy says that all the palace needs is some Christmas cheer and everyone resolves to help. We montage a Christmas decorating sequence as they get the place in ship shape with Kevin and Margaret making eyes at each other the entire time. After the, t- after the montage, the palace looks very Christmassy except for the lack of hot chocolate, according to Olivia. And she convinces both Kevin and Margaret to go into the kitchen to make some hot chocolate for everybody. In no time, they wind up dropping some flour on Kevin's head and causes a playful flower fight until it's interrupted by Antonio, Margaret's chief of staff. Antonio's handsome and has an accent and seems to have Margaret's best interests as a leader at heart. When they have a conversation in the dining room, Stacy not so subtly eavesdrops, pretending to be decorating and winds up saying that she has a sweater made of tinsel. Later, Stacy comes into Margaret's room for some hairspray and starts probing Margaret about her relationship with Antonio. She says he's been loyal, serving under both her and her father before her, and that he is handsome. They, again, an American butting their way into global politics. politics. <laughs> yep. So, Look. so the king was her father. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, I I couldn't remember who the king was. I believe so, but there is a moment where we finally find out what happened between Kevin and um, 
between Kevin and Margaret where she says that her cousin didn't want the the crown, I believe. Oh, he didn't ask Yeah, if, if my slight knowledge of Line of Secession, it could have been Fiona's dad that died. Fiona's older brother said no. And since Margaret was the next oldest like child um, mm-hmm. that wasn't male, um, then she would get it over Fiona. Um, right. The, so maybe it's Fiona's dad. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That was the king? Yeah. I, th- I think oh, that's yeah, somehow she... way secession works. Right. But then, yeah, it's a fake kingdom, so it could be anything. Right. So, yeah, it's supposedly Dutch. She was a duchess, Margaret. Yeah. Okay. And she unsuspectingly inherits the throne. So I'm guessing that's what it is. Not not two dead dads, just the one. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if it was like an ex-husband. I feel like that would have been too dark, right? Sure. No. Right? Oh, my my husband, the king, died. Oh, here's Kevin, a, a baker from Chicago. That would have mm-hmm. made the first movie way different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see the first one, so I wasn't 100% sure what the dynamic was. Mm-hmm. But that makes sense. Yeah. Stacey reminds her that so is Kevin, handsome being, and then they're going to get ready for the party. At the party, Edward is still horned up without release as a kiss between he and Stacy is interrupted by Olivia. The eye rolls the fuck out of her. The trumpets then sound and Margaret comes in to greet the crowd. Antonio greets her, but then Kevin steps up and takes her to the dance floor for the first dance. On the dance floor, Kevin asks her to take a drive with him tomorrow as friends. She agrees. Then the movie really starts when Fiona Pembroke, Mag- Margaret's cousin, comes in. Another Vanessa Hudgens who ate this role up. She's a ne'er do well party girl that seems to have run through her father's fortune since he's died. And after hitting on Kevin for a while, she goes off for, with her minions who wind up pickpotting, pocketing as many guests as the party as possible. Fiona and the minions regroup, and they've only been able to swipe some pocket change, an invitation, someone's dentures, and some two-ply toilet paper. It is two-ply, though. I, can I sway you with one thing, Ant? What? What's that? Uh, Kevin, the actor who plays Kevin, he's, he's a sub-sixer. I mean, probably everybody in this movie is a sub six. Well, I, I got to look at uh, what's the other fucker's name? Antonio. All right, hold on. I want to see if it says his uh, he's six two. Antonio six two. All right. So that we have a plus sixer in the midst. So, yeah, see, th- he should have just used that to his advantage. He so, should have told so. Margaret he's below six feet. And that <laughs> therefore your your lineage is in jeopardy there. So Kevin is literally a short king consort. Yes. Yeah. Now he is <laughs> a short prince more accurately. Uh, it doesn't go with the joke, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just being accurate, man. All right, don't blame me. That's how the Royals do that shit. <laughs> Frustrated with her minions efforts. Uh, she sends them away. Next day, Kevin and Margaret plan to spend some time together outside the palace. But just as they're about to leave, Antonio pulls her away due to an urgent matter. So Antonio brings her into the palace to a bottle of champagne and a gift, and he reveals his intentions to her, admitting that there's more than one reason as to why he chose to serve under her. And she says she'll have to think about it. In the conversation with Stacy, Margaret says that she's thinking about it because Antonio is a good guy, and she's not sure that they should try things again with Kevin. Meanwhile, Antonio calls Kevin into one of the rooms in the palace to basically tell him that he should forget about Margaret because he's just some poor baker from Chicago. But Olivia overhears this conversation and runs to tell Stacy that they're going to need to go into overtime with the plan to get Margaret and Kevin back together. So they go to Margaret with the plan to switch again. The idea that she's being too busy, that she's too busy as queen to spend time with Kevin. But if she pretends to be Stacy, she'll have enough time to, with him to see if there's any more sparks there. So she says, she says that she'll only do it if Kevin agrees. Now, Kevin, he also agrees to it as long as Margaret is OK with it. And poor dummy Edward is left completely yeah. in the dark. Yeah, why? for no reason. Yep. Meanwhile, as her minions sing terrible karaoke, Fiona tells them of her plan. She wants to pose as her cousin Margaret, get crowned queen, then transfer a bunch of money to herself as they escape to a country with no extradition. So they set up a plan to give her a makeover and to basically kidnap the queen, but what they need to find out where Margaret is going to be and when. See, so what she should do is wait until after the coronation and then make the switch, right? Because she gets stuck because she's not coronated yet after she already kidnaps yeah. the queen. Yes, that would make more sense. Yeah, fatal flaw. Yeah, but she probably realizes it would be harder for her to kidnap her when she's queen. Sure. I'm assuming it's the... It was pretty yeah. easy to get to her 
at that yeah. party. Fiona just walks through the palace too at at the ne- in the next scene. Just like mm, here, Cuzzy, where are you? Right. <laughs> I, I I think maybe I'm wrong, but doesn't this whole plan fall through when she confronts who she thinks is Stacy, right? And then it turns out that it's Margaret that she's talking to. And then she tries to like blackmail Margaret. I go, I'll I'll call the the guards on you. That's not going to work. Why wouldn't it? Because they would know that she is not the real queen. Why? And Why Antonio they? could figure it out. Why couldn't the guards? Well, I mean, she doesn't think of a tattoo. But other than that, at that moment, she doesn't have any reason to think that her plan is not going to work. So, so you do you think that she could have gotten away with it? I'm thinking that in terms of. Despite the one tattoo reveal, which is silly that they wouldn't have thought of that the entire time making her over. um, There's no reason to not think like assume you walk into that room and the one that looks like this dressed like Margaret tells you escort Miss uh, Duchess Stacy or Prince Princess Stacy out of this uh, this room. Right. So now there's no. Go ahead. What's the re- what's the reason that you would think that that she's lying? But now you're holding another uh, another royal in uh, like you're holding them in prison now, right? Which, you've got to you're, she's an improviser, man. That's declaring war in some places. But this isn't <laughs> Margaret, or this isn't Margaret. This is this is Fiona. No, but what we're saying is, if if the guards believe that Fiona is Margaret, yes. Margaret has now imprisoned who well, they no, no, think Well, no, not necessarily is... imprisoned, just escort her out of the room. But then wouldn't she come back? Right, if you just escort her out, I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to come back later. <laughs> I, Dan, I, I can't <laughs> explain to you a, a Switch movie. I, but some Switch movies make sense. This one does not. Right? They, they, uh, there's too many holes. <laughs> there, this is a, this, so, yes, Fiona is acting... Um, desperate she yes. she realizes that who she talking to is in fact the person that she thought was already kidnapped who is currently dressed as stacy so she makes a play and she leans into the current situation that she's in to make the best of it to get her her way buy, essentially buy her buy, some time yeah to buy herself some time so she could figure out what the next step is and buy maybe in, and maybe second. in best case scenario um Margaret believes it's just Stacy not wanting to give up the crown. Right. I think at this point you have to decide you're going to commit regicide. I mean, if it was a different movie, if this wasn't a PG a G movie, yes, there are lots of things that these people could have done to make this movie different, make these plans different. Yeah. And kill it, killing everyone in your path 100% <laughs> is a definitely a different way to go about things. Yeah. I, I think that's the only way this movie actually makes sense. Because now it, you're talking about her being, you know, desperate. Just, just how desperate are you? Yes. You're going to go her, all the way here or, you know, shit or get off the pot. Yeah. Her stabbing her with a scepter and then hiding the body in the closet probably buys her just as much time, if not more. If Maybe a little more. Uh, <laughs> there's a scene where, uh, what's the cousin's name? Uh, yeah. Fiona. Fiona is kind of you know she's she's strutting her stuff she's cock of the walk uh in her bedroom and then kevin knocks and she has she's wearing the tiara or the crown is it it's a it's one or the other right yeah and she throws it into the tree and the camera fixates on the the shot i was like oh well that that's got to come into play at one point right and it, it never does was it just to show that oh that was a good shot i think so okay i didn't know if maybe i missed something no, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think it comes back. So they set up a plan to give her a makeover. Uh, so Fiona, Fiona heads to the palace under the guise of giving Margaret a gift for the orphans and runs into Edward. So she asks him where Margaret is, and he mentions a Christmas concert with the children's choir the next day. And she starts asking about the details regarding the time Margaret and Stacy switched. And he mentions that it happened when they ran into each other in the bathroom. So she drops off the gift to the to Margaret's handler, and leaves telling her minions that they need to put the plan into effect now because the coronation is coming. The next day, Olivia and Edward have a conversation at breakfast that she tells him that Stacy is not healing well, so she can't go to the concert. So the dummy just says okay and sits back down and goes about his business. And then they switch again. 
montage ensues of Stacy and Margaret switching while Fiona makes herself over to look like Margaret. And then Margaret, as Stacy, is off to spend time with Kevin. Then Edward sees Stacy as Margaret and he asks for advice about Stacy to Stacy. Specifically that they're not fucking in so many words. And she says everything will be all right and then leaves for the concert. Edward then goes to check on Stacy, who Olivia is telling him is still in her room. But she stops him and convinces him to take her Christmas shopping so she could find something for her dad. Something she was supposed to do with Stacy, according to Olivia. So Margaret and Kevin go to a Christmas village to spend some time together while Stacy attends the Christmas concert as Margaret. And Olivia and Edward go Christmas shopping so Olivia could keep Edward distracted. Though this plan does not require deceiving Edward, so this does not make much sense. Stacy watches the concert alone, and Fiona with her minions show up ready to make the switch. The Christmas switch. At the Christmas village, Margaret and Kevin make snowmen and discuss what went wrong in their relationship. Kevin wanted to live a simple life with her in Chicago, but then Margaret's cousin refused the throne, putting her in a place for the crown, and frankly, she likes being able to make a difference in the world as queen. Here, here's one thing about this. You're telling me that they stopped the entire town from being able to enjoy this Christmas village just so they could talk? Is that <laughs> what we're saying here? Pretty shitty people. You bought it all out. No one can experience the Christmas fun because the royals are there. Sounds about right. Yeah. No, yeah, again, this is this is the perfect picture of how the royals are anywhere. I'm sure if they could legally switch places with people, they would do it. Yeah. <laughs> but Kevin basically says that he'd rather be with her in this world of royalty than to not be with her any longer. And then they kiss. After the concert, Stacy is announced as Margaret to an after party where Fiona's minions pop up. The girl minion pretends that she overheard a journalist, journalist plan to report lurid details about the queen in order to distract Margaret Stacy's hand, Margaret Stacy's handler. And then the guy spills a drink on Margaret Stacy, and the girl <laughs> ushers Margaret Stacy into the bathroom to clean up, and then Fiona pops up and chloroforms her. Uh, probably the single best moment in the movie. As she you just mentioned. drops like a stone. It's so good. Well, so they, probably Fiona- had to, they probably had to do it that way so that you didn't see it was a different actress. Sure. So Fiona Margaret goes back to the party while her minions use Stacy Margaret into a hiding spot. Stacy telling them that she is not Margaret, but them not listening to her. This is going to get very complicated. Yeah. Fiona Margaret runs into a classmate of real Margaret's and starts talking about things only Margaret would know. So she brushes her off and leaves in a hurry. Fiona arrives at the palace and enjoys pretending to be Margaret as she sets up camp in her bedroom, trying on all her jewelry. But then real Margaret comes to the bedroom thanking Fiona, thinking she's Stacy for the opportunity to switch and to be with Kevin. Can, can we can we call her Margaret Stacy? Uh yeah, I think I do say I think I do call her Margaret Stacy at some point. Fiona confused the entire time, slowly starts putting together the pieces that her minions picked up Stacy while she was switched with Margaret. So Fiona leads into being Margaret, even right to Margaret's face, pretending that the real Margaret is actually Fiona. <laughs> confused. Margaret Stacy leaves. Fiona calls her minions to tell them that they screwed up, even though it seemed like they couldn't have done anything differently. So they suggest that Fiona moves up the coronation earlier so they can put the plan into effect earlier and get out of town. Margaret Stacy then goes to talk to Edward and tells him about the switch, telling him she did it to get closer to Kevin. Then her handler, Mrs. Dontelli, comes in upset, saying that Fiona Margaret fired her and is moving up the coronation. So Margaret Stacy tells her that she's actually Margaret. And the person that fired her is an imposter. At, at that they, point, can't they all just confront her? You'd think, but they don't know where. But they got to go get Stacy Margaret. They don't know where Stacy is. Yeah. yeah. And now Margaret. everybody knows. So it's like five people know about what's going on. They could just be like, yeah, this person is fake. Yeah. They can't actually say it in a TVG movie, but they're afraid of uh, Mar- uh, Stacy Margaret getting killed if they go confront Fiona Margaret. They, they do mention that, right? Like, oh, we can't say it because they still have Stacy. What is she going to do? Yeah. Kevin then comes to the bedroom to talk to, with Fiona Margaret, thinking he's talking to her with the real Margaret. And she out of nowhere tells him that it's not going to work out between them. And she says he and Olivia need to go home to Chicago. So he leaves. Stacy Margaret, meanwhile, tries to plan her escape from the basement she's being kept in. And Olivia and Kevin head to the airport in a cab. Now, there's a whole thing about like a magic kind of cab driver that's carrying a a carryover from the first one but if you didn't see the first one it doesn't really mean anything it's that magic cab driver santa claus is that what we're or an an elf elf. of some sort (laughs) yeah now this kind of goes back to what i was telling mark uh during falling for christmas because now you've kind of entered the realm of magic 
Mm-hmm. And I feel like with a Christmas movie, you either need to fully lean into the magic or don't have the magic at all. Sure. Because it's, it's very like, w- did the elf guy do anything? Sure. Or is he just there? Uh, he's just there to make uh, to make sure that Kevin doesn't get on the flight, right? Yeah, he, he was doing as long as possible. That's why he took the long route to give them as much time as they need it. I, I'm gonna. I know I sound like a, a prick. <laughs> you, you don't need magic to do that. You just like oh, you know, there's bad traffic on the 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 autobahn or whatever. So we're just gonna take the we're gonna take the scenic route. Yeah, the the, the, the bridge got flooded out in June. Right, or it freezes over or whatever. I don't know, but they literally say that, and then the little girl asks, you know, in June, as though it does not rain in June. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I guess the uh, Montanero summer is dry. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but you don't need magic to, to do that. Just, you know, I'm just going to take the long way. There you go. Any one of us could have done that, essentially. And we're, <laughs> none of us are magic. That we know of. Uh, yeah, I don't want to speak for you guys. I, I am yeah. non-magical. Back at the palace, Edward and Margaret Stacy try to piece it all together with Mrs. Donatelli. And Frank, the driver, they put together that it must be Fiona and they must be keeping Stacy at Fiona's father's estate. So they all plan to get Stacy back and to stop Fiona. None of these names mean anything anymore. (laughs) They're just names. Yeah. Antonio then comes to talk to Fiona Margaret and he reveals that he knows that she's Fiona based on a tattoo on her hand. But he actually wants in on the plot and it will help her make her escape if she donates a bunch of money to a fake charity for him. Meanwhile, Fiona's male minion tries to bring Stacy some food, but Stacy manages to knock him out with a loose barrel and runs. On her way out, she pushes the girl into a chest that locks. The guy runs after her into the courtyard when Edward, Margaret, and the others show up. Edward comes over and punches the dude right in the face, knocking him out cold. Edward and Stacy reunite and they kiss and they all pack into the car to leave. Meanwhile, Antonio and Fiona are at the church to coronate her, even going so far as to bringing the prime minister in as a witness. Kevin is still on the way to the airport, going a long way thanks to a bridge that was destroyed in a flood, as mentioned by the magic cab driver. As Fiona Margaret is about to get coronated, Margaret and Stacy show up to put a stop to it. Takes some convincing and some help from Stacy and Edward, but eventually Fiona gives up the act and throws Antonio under the bus as well. They take Antonio away, and Fiona tries to plead her way into a relaxed sentence, given the fact she wasn't the one that did actually did the kidnapping and she didn't mean to commit treason. She's just a little bit of treason. What's so bad about it? Yeah. She throws out a few more excuses, but eventually Margaret says that maybe she can talk the court down to a shorter sentence and community service. And then Fiona mentions that she told Kevin that he had to go because he would have found out about her plan, so everyone mad dashes to the airport to stop him. Kevin and Olivia oh. make it to the airport. Sorry. Uh, I was thinking at this point, so when... When the real Margaret and Stacy go to uh, confront Fiona at the coronation and they 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 ask Antonio something, this would have been the perfect opportunity for Antonio to Antonio to say, I had no idea. Right. Oh, I I had no idea they switched because now you're you're kind of caught. Right. And why would you not backpedal? He does, doesn't he? No, 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 no. He, he's the one that tries to arrest real margaret yeah he he says arrest the imposter who's margaret like right. a fucking idiot but then he after after that attempt he he doesn't he i'm pretty he, sure he, he tries to backpedal oh he, no, he, he says he he wasn't sure that she would have been a good fit yeah he just mocks her for yeah. some reason yeah it makes no sense it, right because you could just if you're antonio you say i had no clue your majesty i'm so sorry there's no way that anyone's gonna believe her because she just lied about being the queen gotcha right and you've at that point you've had no reason if you're margaret you've had no reason not to trust him Mm -hmm. he's like uh he's just an opportunist i suppose i think all the men are just dumb in this edward's dumb as a fence post (laughs) yes but he's like blissfully stupid yeah he's he's innocently stupid yeah Whereas the other ones are just stupid. Then Kevin and Kevin and Olivia make it to the airport. And then Margaret, Stacy, and everyone show up just as he's about to go through customs. They explain the whole switch situation to Kevin and he and Margaret kiss. Margaret spots a priest in the airport and convinces the priest to marry her. And Kevin right there in the middle of the airport. Then we cut to the coronation. Stacy and Edward talk and Stacy says that she was just trying to be the perfect princess. And she's sh- sorry for taking him for granted. Uh, AKA they haven't fucked in three months. 
and the coronation takes place in Margaret's Grand Queen. She shares a kiss with Kevin, and everyone cheers, including Fiona, who is there with a couple of chaperone guards. And that is the end of Princess Switch Switched Again. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, this movie, um, like I said, we, we having no expectations of characters, I was able to enjoy it a little bit more instead of if I watched the first movie and that prince was a lot smarter in that movie. And then going, why is he a moron in this one? Like, I don't get it. Right. Yeah, no, uh, it's a silly, stupid movie, but I really appreciate kind of how how far Vanessa Hudgens takes it with the whole Fiona character. I really do enjoy her performance in this. It's very scenery chewing and i never really would say that i would ever expect vanessa hudgens to chew scenery before so that's one of the that's like the main reason why i I actually do enjoy this movie for what it is is for that performance because i do like how hammy it is yeah her her fiona performance saves the movie for sure Uh, but it's other than that it's a very thin plot uh you have to like we said at the beginning and you really have to suspend disbelief here. Uh, I don't know. Again, there's no reason for the switch. I've, I've said it a few times on this episode. So I think they could have done it better in that regard. But you're it's a Netflix holiday movie. It does what it needs to do mm-hmm. um, in a very roundabout way. But I, maybe I'm expecting too much from a holiday movie. Mm-hmm. I, I was just a little disappointed in it. Uh, Vanessa Hudgens was fine. I, I I thought she was pretty good. I've never seen her act before, so I think this was the first time I'd ever watched her act, and she, she does three roles in this. So hats off to her. She she hustled, so good you, for her. You didn't see Spring Breakers? No, I never saw Spring Breakers. Is that is Ariana Grande in that too? That is Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez, okay. <laughs> I swear I'm not doing that on purpose. I <laughs> don't know them apart. Uh, I yeah, I've never saw that. Although I heard it's good. I think Aunt, you said it was good. Yep. But isn't James if James Franco's in that movie, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> the good and the bad. I suppose. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I, this doesn't get a passing grade for me, but I'm glad you guys liked it. You're spoiled from uh, falling for Christmas. Because I, I think that was just more of a clear cut Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it didn't try to pull. There was no switches, <laughs> <laughs> but it, they did have the amnesia uh, storyline. Yeah. So that that is also kind of lame. But in, in a way, isn't that some sort of switch? No, <laughs> she didn't switch with anybody. <laughs> she was always the same person. <laughs> uh, yep, that's Princess Switch switched again. Uh, I think we talked this one to death. But we are going to be back in a second with another segment. But you guys are going to have to list some ads first so we can pay those bills. And we will be right back. And welcome back. Now it's time for the final segment of this week. And this is we're seeing double. So I went through our past episodes, all 209 episodes. Jesus. And we have I have found that there are not including this movie. 10 instances in which an actor has played multiple roles in the movies that we have covered. Now I want to see how well you guys can remember this. There are 10 here and I will say you are not going to get one of them, but I'm not going to tell you which one, what that one is. So basically you're, you're guessing nine. I want to see how well you guys can remember movies that we've covered. Okay. That had an actor play dual roles. Yep. And I will say, I did not include Time Cop. I was going to say that's the easy one. (laughs) (laughs) Because technically he's not playing dual roles. It is the same character. Okay. I can can get behind that. Okay. So I'll just let you guys guess or think about it until you give up. Is there a way? Would it be something? Are you going to give us like the movie or the actor? Or is it just Um, us trying to remember all 209 movies we watched? I could think of one right now. Okay. Uh, Stalked by my doctor. Yep. Because he plays, it's party, it's the party doctor and the rapey doctor. That's correct. Party doctor and rapey doctor, yeah. Uh, So that's twice, actually. Because we've done two, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Let me think, let me see. So I will say there is, there are two actors that played dual roles in the same movie. 
and then there are is one movie that has three one of them you're probably not going to get is the one that i said you probably aren't going to get where there's three people playing yeah three people in that movie play dual roles you're probably not going to get one of them you might not even get the other one because i didn't even remember it was uh he played dual roles i can't in blood rage is blood rage one of them Blood Rage is one of them. Okay. I, I couldn't remember if the, the twins were actually the same person or if they were two different people. Yep. Uh, after that, I'm kind of spent. <laughs> okay. There is a movie specifically about twins, not Blood not, Rage. Not twins. No, there, there's you a didn't... movie that we've covered was specifically about twins. Okay. Uh... Is it the Neil Breen movie? Or am I, I thinking of a Neil I Breen not... movie I haven't seen? So I did not count that one because we okay. only covered the trailer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a good guess, Mark. I would never yeah. have guessed that. Uh, uh, I'll give you some years. Does Kirk uh, Cameron play you know, somebody else? No. Okay. Uh, one of the movies, the one I was just talking about in terms of about twins, was from 2011. Oh. Um... It is a comedy. And this one is the one that has three in them. Well, is it, it the three... one with Matthew McConaughey? Nope. Damn it. Oh, I, I know one. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we've done Ernest movies. Ernest has played multiple roles. Mm, not in any of the ones we've covered. He doesn't. Like, he's always didn't... he's always Ernest, though. OK, yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, he's no, Ernest right. playing characters. Yeah. You're right. right. Yep. In yeah. the in the in the plot of the movie, he's not playing. Dual right. He, he's just dressing up as other characters. Yeah. Right. So one movie from tw- a comedy from 2011, which uh, has two actors playing dual roles. You already said Mark Soper in Blood Rage. OK. And then we have an action movie. Oh, is it Arnold Schwarzenegger in Last Action Hero? Yeah, that's correct. Oh, he plays, nice. He plays last. Yeah. He plays Arnold as well as uh, Jack. I had forgotten until I was sitting here thinking about it that he does show up as Arnold in that. Uh, we also have an other action movie from 1991. Not a, is it's not a Sylvester Stallone movie, is it? It is not, but he's okay. but the person who is playing it has already been mentioned on this podcast once. Oh, in this segment, and we have another comedy from also from 1991, and this one has two people playing dual roles. Yeah. And we've we've covered Mike Myers, right? We've done we did the Love Guru, Love Guru, and Cat in the Hat. And he does not play dual roles. Roles in, in either okay. of them. Yeah. Dana Carvey. Did does we... not. No. Nope. He does... Right. He's in disguise. He's in disguise. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The 2011 uh, comedy is. Oh, um, it's... I guess she's the not. Um, yeah, she's the man, right? The soccer movie. Nope. Well, yeah. she she Even... only plays a man. She's but she's always oh, the same okay. person. She right? pretends to be a man, but the the actor that plays her brother is an actor. Why did you get rid of Time Cop? Because that's too easy. No, not at all. Um, because, like I said, t- in Time Cop, he's not playing two characters. He's playing the same character from different timelines. Different timelines. Okay. I could have given you guys that as well, but you know, in the right. technicality speaking, um, sure, that that makes sense. Yeah, we we do have a Christmas movie in this. It's one of the first Christmas movies we covered. This is Star Wars. Yep, Harvey Corman plays several characters. I think like four. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah, I, I remember we did the Star Wars special, and I remember that being early. Yeah. Um, oh, I, um, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Dan, you go. Uh, no, you please. <laughs> uh, the Turtles movie, the third one. Yep. Elias yeah. Mateus yeah. plays Casey Jones, Casey Jones, and, the, Jones and the past guy. Uh, I will say Adam Sandler. Jack Adam and Jill. Sandler. Yep. That's the 2011 comedy. Yes, uh, I will also. Comedy. I'm going to give you two because David Spade also plays double dual characters in that, as well as Eugenio Derbez okay. plays dual characters in that. I don't remember that at all. Uh, you've got most of them. Okay, you've only got three more. Two of them are from the same movie, and one of them is the actor you've or someone has already mentioned. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm assuming. Nope. No, no, no. Out of the out of the correct answers, you haven't mentioned him, but you've okay. you've mentioned somebody that there weren't m- dual roles in Nothing But Trouble, right? Or there were. Okay. Really? Mm-hmm. John Candy. John Candy does, as does yeah. Dan Aykroyd. Okay. Oh, wow. John Candy I... plays the cop and his sister. Yeah. Dan yeah. Aykroyd plays the judge and the little 
weird baby, the big diaper baby. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, and you have one left. That's the 91 comedy. The 91 action movie. Is the one we're missing. Mm-hmm. It's Does Dark it's not... Man count? Or is that the same person? Same person. Yeah. It's not Judge Dredd, right? Nope. That's not 91. Not Stone Cold. Nope. You've mentioned uh, this guy before. On this podcast right now. Yep. Yeah. On this episode. This is not yep. Is it at Eric Roberts? Nope. It's the, of the ones we we guessed wrong on him for the yep. wrong movie. Yep. God damn. Uh, and Stallone doesn't play two roles in a movie. Not that we've covered. Okay. He is an action star, too. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yep. Okay. Double Trouble? Double Impact. Double, Double impact. impact. There yes. we go. Right. Yep. You guys got it. Yay! <laughs> Pretty good. A little good help, bit, but... but yeah. I didn't give you too much help, I didn't think. No, yeah. no, you gave us the right amount, I'd say. Yeah. Wow. We've covered a lot of dual roles on this podcast. Love it. Love dual roles. And then I was looking up on on uh, Wikipedia, like all a bunch of movies that we could cover. It's Lindsay Lohan plays dual roles, and I know who killed me. That's supposed to suck. <laughs> I think it might be matters. a spoiler for that movie. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud Not Atlas. that it matters, because that movie is awful. But yeah. Southland Tales, Sean William Scott oh, plays twins. S- Ooh, yeah, that's notoriously bad. I feel that like has... that's really long, though. Yeah, I think it's like two and a half hours, because I've nope. actually watched it. Yeah, that's a no. That has The Rock in it, right? Yeah. Okay. And Justin Timberlake. I think my boy Will Sasso's in that movie, too. <laughs> I think I actually watched that for my 365 days. Yeah. Um, it's terrible. No um, Sarah Michelle Gellar's in it. Um, Sean William Scott. Curtis Armstrong. Isn't, like, Beverly D'Angelo in it? Yeah, there's a lot of people in this. Yeah, that's a very... It, it only made, like, yeah. $500,000 yeah, or it, something it, like that, Yeah, it's, right? like, multiple storylines. Like, Janine Garofalo's yeah. in it. Um, Christopher Lambert, John Larroquette, Bay Ling, John Lovitz. Wow. Mandy Moore. Uh, yeah, Sherry O'Terry, Amy Fowler. It's, yeah. it's, like, an ensemble movie. Will Sasso, your boy. My boy. Will Kevin Sasso. Smith's in it. Mm. Yeah, this movie's yeah, bad. It, I, I, I'm it happy is, that we have kind of a niche... Yeah. Well, we've done quite a bit of that. Yeah. Two and a half hours, by the way, I was correct. Yeah. So this is as much as we're going to talk about Southland Towels on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. There's Ski Ball in it. And the uh, and Killer's your Song favorite. is in it. Yeah. We all know Anthony loves Ski Ball. Mm-hmm. Can't get enough of it. Love it. All right. Let's stop talking about Southland Towels. This has been the episode on Switched Again, Princess Dot, Pin for Princess Diaries. No, the Princess Switch switched again. Next week, as we mentioned, we're going to be covering our um, our holiday Christmas movie of the month with our TV Christmas specials poll that is currently on Twitter. If you're listening to this before Saturday, I think. Uh, so check that out. Vote if you can and listen to next week's episode. I think we might be announcing a little special thing that we might want to do just before Christmas. We'll drop that on Twitter if we plan to do it. <laughs> but uh yeah that's this episode this week so we're gonna get out of here and yeah we'll see you next week uh check us out on all socials tick Pod on twitter and instagram they call this movie on tiktok and uh, give us some five star reviews if you if you like that if you like us if you don't like us just give us five star review anyway it's not gonna pay you any mind it's not it's gonna the change time, anything for you it's the season of giving yeah no skin off your sack right if you give us five star review right. all right So we're wrapping up here. The director of Princess Switch Switched Again is Mike Roll. So for Dan Aquino and Mark Myers, it's the ink that I kept telling Mike Roll, well, you certainly made a movie, didn't you? Thanks for listening to They Called Us a Movie. Subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at TicTamPod. That's T-C-T-A-M-Pod. You can also check us out on TikTok at They Called Us a Movie. 